Before we start, I want to recommend my Instagram. There, I post photos of new projects, and generally, what I'm working on. In the future, I plan to upload short videos on current topics there. You'll find the Instagram link in the description. I would appreciate your subscription. Hello everyone. Lately, I've been coming across rare items. This time, a good person asked me to repair a charger. The last time I saw something like this was in my distant childhood, in someone's garage. Despite its age, this workhorse has faithfully served its owner until now. After opening it up, I suggested to the owner to slightly modernize the device, but he flatly refused, and as it turned out later, they are the same age, and the person wanted to keep the original components. What can I say, nostalgia? This is an ancient charger for car and motorcycle batteries from 1962. The year 1962. Year of manufacture, according to the owner. Unfortunately, nothing has been preserved on the nameplate. Time does take its toll. Just think about it, the charger is almost 60 years old. It belongs in a museum, but despite this, it is still working hard. Apparently, it's too early for the old timer to retire. It's missing a whole eight years, but that's okay. It will last. Technology is not a person and it can always be repaired. An old school case made of sheet metal. To disassemble and access the insides, you need to unscrew the side covers and remove the legs. The screws that attach the legs also hold the power transformer. On one of the covers, we see the inscription VSA-10. This is, truly, a legendary selenium rectifier. It can charge both 6-volt and 12-volt batteries. Switching is done manually by rearranging the corresponding contacts. Here, essentially, is the technical documentation of the device. The reason for the malfunction is simple. The fuse has blown. One of the reasons I love and appreciate Soviet technology is that the fuses here actually protect and blow, safeguarding the device. In modern technology, the device protected by a fuse is the first to blow. Protecting the fuse. The fuse itself is a 2 amp network fuse, a true work of art, reliable and beautiful. Since it's practically impossible to find a similar one now, we'll repair this one. There are many charts and programs for calculating the current of a fusible link depending on the wire material. We need a 2 amp fuse. We take a copper wire of the appropriate diameter, apply a stable current to it, and, as we can see, the wire burns out at a current of about 2 amps. Everything is great. All that's left is to solder this wire, and our fuse is ready. Plug the fuse back in place. I also noticed that the low voltage indicator lamp was missing. Fortunately, incandescent bulbs. I have plenty. So, we screw the appropriate bulb into the socket and can reassemble it. But before that, let's study how this charger is constructed. Despite being made about 60 years ago, everything is assembled properly. Otherwise, it wouldn't have worked flawlessly. For so long. Any charger consists of three main parts. These are the power source, in this case, a mains transformer, a rectifier, usually diode-based, and a current limiting and voltage stabilization unit. In those years, charging a battery with stable voltage apparently wasn't in vogue. Or the batteries were of such high quality that they weren't afraid of overvoltage. But here's the limiting unit. The charging current is present here. The most reliable and fail-safe way to limit current is to use a load resistor. In this case, we have flat, zigzag-shaped nichrome plates. The excess current is dissipated on them, and naturally, they will heat up, but this is their normal operating mode. Looking ahead, I'll say that the charger can withstand long-term short circuits. In this case, the short circuit current is about 18A. The next unit is the rectifier. Here, it's a selenium one. Selenium rectifiers are used in a device. 7542, which also belongs in a museum. We have two of these assemblies. Each of them contains four plates. The plate consists of an aluminum substrate, which serves as a radiator. 
The rectifier's cathode is made from a tin and cadmium alloy. The reverse voltage for each plate, 20 volts. The rectified voltage is about 14 with a current up to A. If you're confused, I'll explain more clearly. We have the equivalent of four diodes. Each diode consists of two selenium plates connected in series. The voltage of each plate, 20 volts. That is, the total reverse voltage of each assembly, 40 volts with a current up to amperes. Selenium rectifiers are almost never used anymore because they have many disadvantages, but they have one very important advantage. They can withstand multiple overloads and also have the ability to self-recover. But, unfortunately, such rectifiers are subject to aging and, over time, lose their original characteristics. The form of the charging current looks as follows. At the output, there is a pulsating voltage. After the rectifier, we get doubled pulsations at a frequency of 100 Hz. The voltage is not smoothed because there is no output capacitor. The amplitude of these pulsations reaches up to 13 volts, depending on the mains voltage, as the charger is not stabilized. It might not be enough for a full charge of the batteries, but according to the owner, the device was charging. Well, who are we to dispute that? It is quite likely that the slightly reduced output voltage is related to the aging of selenium rectifiers and the degradation of the plates. The mains transformer was very much liked. Despite its age, it is almost silent. The rated power of such a transformer is about 100 watts. The maximum charging current for 12 volt batteries is 8A, which is quite good. In the case of charging 6 volt batteries, the maximum charging current reaches A. What can I say? The device is quite good. Its age confirms the fact that the charger is extremely reliable and can serve faithfully for more than one generation. I'm sure many of you have seen such chargers in the garage with your grandfather or father. Touching such things, even if they are not scarce, you realize that this is a piece of history created at the height of the Cold War and possessing high reliability. Moreover, the device was made entirely by hand. Every screw was turned by a person. This is worthy of respect and is a reason for pride. Once, we were able to create truly everlasting technology. With that, I can only say goodbye. Follow me on Instagram, and well, that's all. As always, this was Kazya Naka with you, and until we meet again, bye.